Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to uh, try and answer some of the questions that have been asked of me regarding making bread in a bread machine and um, whether or not you can make bread ahead, um, all, all kinds of questions. So I am going to try and answer some of those questions today while I lead you through uh, a bread making process. And I look forward to coming back right after this and we'll get started. So here I am, I have everything out here to make a loaf of white bread or a batch of buns. And probably the most frequently asked question um, about why I make the bread in my bread machine, and, but I don't bake it in the bread machine, is because I don't like the crust. I think it makes the crust too thick on the bread. That's my main reason for making dough using the, to the dough setting on my bread maker at just making dough and then rolling it out and putting it into a bread pan, allowing it to rise and bake in the conventional way. There are, uh, an another reason why I don't care to do that is I don't like the hole in the bottom of the bread. Now, if you like a really thick crust on your bread, and I mean all around your bread, then baking it in the bread machine would probably be great for you. Limit yourself when you only use your bread maker for baking bread. Um, it can do so much more than that. And um, one of the wonderful things about the bread machines is that they do have a dough setting, which means that once your dough is prepared, you can make things like cinnamon buns and French bread and um, dinner rolls and um, oh, all kinds of things that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So I find the dough setting to be the most useful setting. In fact, I don't know what the rest of the buttons really do on my machine because I tried it out. I didn't care for the thick crust. I almost gave up on it and put it away in the cupboard. When I realized that I could just make a batch of dough, then I could form the dough myself. So don't give up. Come on back, get your bread maker out and get to work. So today I'm going to talk about making bread in my bread machine, or sorry, making dough in my bread machine. And then I am going to freeze that dough for future use. Frozen dough will last in the deep freeze. I wouldn't leave it more than three months, but for most people just to be able to have the benefit of having it in the deep freeze is enormous. So you take, you take the bread out, you allow it to thaw on the counter, uh, you rise it up and you bake it. Easy peasy. It's, it's the easiest thing in the world. Anyway, so we have to get started with this bread and get, get it, or this dough and get it into the machine. So I know that you have seen me make this recipe before, and, but I will leave it in the description box below. Um, we're going to start with a cup of water. We're using yeast, so we're going to feed it a couple tablespoons of sugar. You don't need that much sugar if you care not to have that. Um, you need two and a quarter teaspoons or one packet of quick rise yeast. I should say also, I have made bread with the recipe from, that would have come with my manual. I had to look it up online because my bread machine didn't come with a manual. Um, I've made it with bread machine flour and bread machine yeast, and I didn't like the result. So I'm using all-purpose flour and just a quick rise yeast. So I've got my water, sugar, and yeast in there. And I've seen online people say that um, salt doesn't mix very well with yeast. I've never had a problem with that, but if uh, you try it out and you don't like the result, you can do something different. 
the cost of an experiment with a loaf of bread. You're in it for very little money, so don't be afraid to give it a try. Okay, so in went a quarter of a cup of oil, and now I'm going to put in a teaspoon of salt, and three cups of flour. It's had to reach for my handy dandy tool. Um, it seems like I'm always filling this poor old jug full of flour because I bake so much bread. Now, one of the reasons that I enjoy my bread maker is purely for helpful reasons because when I was in the grocery store and shopping for bread on a regular basis and you read the labels, now you would think that um, bread would be as easy as what we're doing today. The ingredients would be simple ingredients, straightforward, flour, water, yeast, sugar, salt, and oil. But that is not the case. So I'm going to put this in and I'll be back. Um, that is not the case at all. There are preservatives in bread and stabilizers in bread to stabilize the flour and there's all sorts of things in there that are really not necessary and I'm sure that they can't be terribly good for us. I know from my, from my own experience, I have had a loaf of bread sit on my counter for three weeks before it went moldy, a loaf of bread that I bought at the store where a loaf of homemade bread, I sit it on the counter, and six days is just about pushing it. By the seventh day, I can see mold starting to form. So there's no inhibitors in there. It is natural things, and therefore, I believe it's much better for us. I'm no doctor, for sure, but I believe that it's better for us. And I hope that um, this has been a little bit helpful to you. I'm going to get the bread machine started and it makes quite a bit of noise so I'll stop um, and when it's ready to uh, come out of there I'll bring you back and I'll show you what I do to form the bread to put it into the deep freeze and we can go from there. Well the first batch of dough is ready so I'm going to take it out and I'll show you how I treat it. Nicely risen in the pan. And I, well actually I'll dump it out here first on this surface, which is clean. I'm gonna knead that again. And I am just going to, because this is gonna be the loaf of bread, I am going to just make it into about a eight inch by a 14 inch, rectangle or close to a rectangle because I'm going to roll it to put it into the pan and then I'm just going to take this and I've sprayed the inside of this bag a ziploc bag and I just did that because I want to use the bag again um, and I don't want to cut the bag away which you could do and then I'm just flattening it out and the reason that I flattened it out is because I want it to thaw quickly when I bring it out of the out of the deep freeze and put it on the counter so that I can get ready to cook it. I'm also not going to dilly-dally around here now that I've gotten it out of the bread machine. I don't want it to start its second rise. So I'm going to go put this in the deep freeze and then I'm going to start the second batch of bread which is going to be buns which I will show you how I'm going to form them. and. Uh, get them ready for the freezer as well. Okay, I'm back. And our next batch of dough is ready. And again, it has risen up really nicely. And this batch we're gonna turn into dinner buns. The recipes, exactly the same. And you can use this recipe for um, 
for all kinds of different doughs that you're going to make. I just see I've got some dry pieces that didn't mix in very well. I'm going to remove them. And now I'm just going to squish it down so that it removes some of the um, some of the air, but I don't mind a little air in there. I'm going to just pinch off a bit. Now I'm doing this particularly because I've had people notice that when I made the uh, three different kinds of bread that you can make with the bread machine, um, they noticed that I didn't finish or show them how I rolled the buns. So I just pinch off a piece, I bring all the tattery edges together, and then just set it down on the surface and cut my hands and just spin it around like this a few times and it seals in all of the end bits and then I'm going to set it on there and I'm going to do this for the entire bunch of bread or bunch of dough sorry I'll slow that down on the next one I meant to that time but got distracted So pinch it off, whatever size you want it to be, keeping in mind that it's going to more than double in size from the time, from, because you're going to let it rise again, and then when it goes into the oven and it hits the heat, it's going to rise beyond that as well. So keep that in mind. So this is the upper part of the bread, and this is the lower, and I'm just going to push in the middle and bring it in and in and in until I have all the raggedy edges in a little pinch at the bottom. And then I'm going to put it, the pinch side down, cut my hand over top of it, and just roll it until all those little bits have been incorporated. And repeat the process. Now, I'm going to tell you what's, what's up with this. So I'm going to put these in the freezer overnight tonight and then tomorrow I am going to bring them back out of the freezer so that I can show you the process of thawing them and um, baking them off. It has been my experience that they may not uh, rise quite as much after they've been frozen but it's still a really good product and um, this gets you the jump on any special occasion like if you were planning a dinner a family dinner for next weekend and you knew that your week was going to be a bit rushed but you you had the time today to set up the bread machine then this would be the time for you to do it do it freeze the freeze the dough and then the day of the event as long as you take the bread dough, the dough buns out of the freezer and get them onto a tray as long as you do that, um, then they would be thought in time for you to have them for fresh buns for that night's meal. So it's pretty handy to have them in the deep freeze all ready to go. And it cuts down on your work the day of. If you can spread it out over the course of, say, a week, it makes hosting a dinner for you know, three or four friends, it makes it so much more practical and possible. I think as we age, the things we used to be able to do. I noticed this year, I put a lot of stress on myself at Christmas time, and I think all my guests noticed too. It was like, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off, and that's, you know, not my usual style. I'm usually a very relaxed host, so I right away saw things that I could have done differently. Um, the first thing probably would have been just to plan less. I had so many dishes on the go and then I ended up with so many leftovers that I had to deal with so I ended up sending everybody home with you know plastic containers full of food so I've got to be more mindful about um, the fact that I am aging and that I just simply can't do the things I used to do nor do I need to do as much as I was doing either because it just it's just unnecessary nothing got wasted but it certainly um, it's certainly not necessary to go all out in that way 
Now I'm just about to the end of this. I didn't intend to talk my way through it, but here we go anyway. And then I just wanted to show you what I do to treat these before they go into the freezer. I think I've got two more here. Uh, maybe snitch a little more from this one. Turn all the raggedy edges in. Put the raggedy bit down. Give it a swirl. And this is going to make 15, 16 rolls. And um, also means that once they're frozen, I'm going to explain this. So in the freezer, they can tend to dry out a little bit. So I always give them a quick spray with this is vanilla, this is coconut oil, but just something to help them. Now the freezer tends to remove the moisture from them. That's why I do that. And then I'm going to cover this pan with plastic wrap, kitchen wrap. And I'm going to put these in the freezer until they are frozen. So about six hours or tomorrow. And then I remove them from the sheet tray. And I put them into a plastic bag altogether. So then if uh, through the week, if I want to have fresh buns, I could just take out three or four or five, whatever it is that I want to cook. And then I don't have to cook the whole batch. So that's a huge help when you're just cooking for one or two people. So um, I'm going to say there's enough here for us for four meals easily. Leftovers. Um, it's so I'm going to get this ready and into the freezer and then I'm going to bring you back tomorrow and we'll go through the process of thawing and baking these. And I will, uh, I'll be here before you know it. Good morning everyone or before noon everyone. Um, I have just taken these frozen bread bits out of the oven. This is a loaf that I intend to thaw, uh, roll into a loaf and proof, the final proof, in a regular bread pan. But first I need to thaw it out. It can thaw right at room temperature. You want to keep an eye on it because you don't want it to. You want it to thaw but you don't want it to rise until you get it formed. And um, that can take three to four hours roughly. I made this a little denser, like I should have flattened it a little more, uh, so it might take a little longer, but I'm home all day. I've got nothing um, grand that I have to be going to do today, so I can definitely keep an eye on it. Now, I just got these buns out that I made yesterday, and you can hear they're frozen completely solid, and I'm just going to put what I, what I can fit or what I think I need into a greased pan and same thing I'm going to let them uh, proof right here in the pan and it will take about the same amount of time to, for them to thaw probably three to four hours and then I will allow them to proof and then we will be ready to bake them all. So having the, the dough made in advance can be a huge benefit to us. And I, you know, if you've, you're lingering around the house anyway, why not get the bread machine out and get the dough started? Now I talk a lot about bread machines, but these recipes totally could be made by hand. You could use the same recipe and mix it in a bowl and just go through the steps of mixing it, kneading it, allowing it to proof for the first time for about an hour, and then forming it into your shapes or rolls, whatever it is you want to do with the bread, and um, then freeze it or bake it off if that's what you're going to do. You could also use a KitchenAid mixer to do the work. There are lots of options to um, make things easier for us, and we're, we're, we just need to learn how to use them. So, I'm, before these get too soft that are left over, I'm going to get busy with them in a bag and I will cover up this, in fact I'll use a piece of this plastic and cover up this pan so it can proof and I will see you back here when this is all ready for uh, the bread to be shaped and to go uh, into the oven. And I will see you in a bit. Well, after about 
30 minutes just resting on the counter. This bread dough has got enough that I can shape it. I can still feel it's, it's firm in the middle, but um, I'm going to shape it up anyway. I'm not going to get too fancy with it. I am just going to roll it like so and tuck in the ends because there we go into the pan now I'm going to grease the top of this just maybe just spray it with some spray while I've got it here I'm going to cover it and I'm going to let it rise and I will let you know exactly how long everything was risen before it goes in the oven and um, to give you an idea of what to expect along the way. It won't be exactly the same as mine because your kitchen's going to be a different temperature than mine and the space that you rise the bread will be different than mine. So you just have to go with the premise that you want this to double in size and uh, work towards that. So I'll be back. And here are my rolls. They've doubled in size and I am just going to pop them into a 375 degree oven for between uh, 20 and about 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. And we'll um, have a look at them when they come out of the oven. Now look at these beautiful buns. And all I had to do was take the frozen dough out of the deep freeze and I put it into the pan, the balls of dough into this pan. I covered it with some uh, kitchen wrap, put a towel over it and let it, um, let it thaw and double in size. Now doubling at your house, it's going to be different than mine, but allow it to double in size. And that took about two hours to, to thaw and double in size. So you're not invested in it for a long time. And that's exactly the result. So I hope you think about giving this a try. I'll show you what the bread looks like when it's time for that. Look at this bread or dough so far. I'm getting ready to go into the oven. I was called away kind of for a family emergency. Everything's okay, nothing to worry about. Um, so this bread rose about probably 45 minutes longer than I would normally have let it go. And um, so, so you just need to let it rise till it's double in size. And this is, the, this is what the dough looks like. I'm gonna put it in the oven and I'll bring you back as soon as it comes out. Well, and here we are with this beautiful loaf of bread. Remember that just this morning, this loaf of bread was frozen, hard, and that we defrosted it and allowed it to rise. And now we have uh, fresh bread and we didn't have to go through the process of making it today. We just needed to let it thaw out and rise. So, I don't know about you guys, but this looks like a win-win to me. I'm super pleased with the result and it does give a nice crunchy crust and um, beautiful texture to the bread. I've already dived into the buns and had one of them with my lunch. A little bit of butter and jam on it and they're nice and light and a really good crumb. And I think that if uh, you made these and froze the dough, made the made the dough and froze it the way I've shown here in this video that um, you would be set for the days that are hard and uh, that you still want to be able to provide your family with or yourself if you're alone with um, homemade bread. I hope you've enjoyed this video folks and if you have that you'll take the time to give it a like. I appreciate your comments and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share it on your social media. That's how you can really help me. And until next time, folks, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.